everybody. We're still getting set up for tonight's live stream, which was going to be live stream, which <laughs> um was going to be a bonfire live stream. Hmm? Oh, you were first. <laughs> <laughs> hey Sheila, we were going to have a bonfire tonight and kind of hang out around the campfire, but there is a storm rolling in. So instead of taking all the equipment out there, um, we figured we'd just stay here in the studio and I am just heartbroken because I really wanted to go outside and enjoy myself this evening by setting stuff on fire. <sighs> so, but it's so nice to see all of you guys. Hey Jim. <laughs> uh, let me get a couple more things set up. Gosh, when was the last time we did a live stream? Like, I feel like it was like a million years ago. <laughs> it's like earlier um, in the week. Was it? What day is it, though? It's the first. It's Thursday. Well, it being the first makes it feel like a brand new, like, I don't know. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Okay, we're good. How is everybody? How is y'all's week going? <laughs> I'm doing fantastically, Don. I'm so excited. We hit a big milestone on Patreon. Um, yeah, it's my Sam dog. Hey, Sam. He's a dumb dog. <laughs> He's my little shadow. Um, we have some mail to open tonight. Um... <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> He's a good boy. Oh. I'm going to start by um, announcing who won this. Uh, oh, thank you, Dreamer. This is an original piece of artwork. It's the first piece that I've done in over a year at the point of drawing it. Um, and I'm giving it away to one lucky patron. Um, I know I normally do fairy houses, but, um, the response that we've had on our artwork, um, has been tremendous. And so, and it was so nice to get to draw again, you guys. It's just, oh my gosh, it's opened up a whole nother avenue of creativity and everything for me. So I'm really excited. And the winner of this well, this was for the second half of May, I guess, um, is Aubrey Brock. Actually, somebody who I kind of fangirl over a little bit here on YouTube. Uh, she's one of our patrons and has been kind of since the beginning. Um, and she does just great tutorials, you guys. Please go over and check her out. Um, but congratulations, Aubrey. I'll send you a message when this is over and um, let you know that you're the winner. But we put all the numbers into the random number generator and found out who won and yours was the lucky number. So congratulations. <laughs> but for those of y'all who want to participate in our next giveaway, this is the second piece I've done here recently. I don't have the time lapse video of this one up yet, um, but it will be coming next week. <laughs> so this is our next giveaway. And this is an 11 by 14 on Bristol Recycled Board um, done in Prismacolors and like Faber-Castell like India ink pens. Um, well, these ones are Prismacolor, but it's, it's a mix of Prismacolor and a Faber-Castell. And so you get an original piece of artwork that I'm so excited to get to share with you guys. Um, so to participate in my giveaways, you would just go to our Patreon, um, <laughs> right on, and uh, pledge just a dollar or more. If you pledge a dollar, it puts your name in the hat once. If you pledge five dollars, it puts your name in the hat five times. And you also get access to like behind the scenes, like progress pictures and all kinds of stuff that I don't post to any of our other social media. So that's kind of fun. You get to see the, the kind of the nitty gritty daily inner works of how we run our business. Um, and then if you pledge ten dollars or more, you actually get your choice of like loot crate sent to you. Um, of like kits or materials or traditional artwork stuff. I want to start sending out some uh, nicer paper and like graphite pencils to those of y'all who are like, well, I want some of that. So it's like, we'll kind of 
share the love around a little bit. So you can choose from that or you can choose just a gift mailed to you. Um, so I'm actually going to set this up somewhere behind me on an easel so everybody can see it. So that way we can keep letting everybody know because a lot of it is, you know, if y'all don't know that we do those loot crates, then you don't know to participate. Let's see how much stuff I can stack in a pile. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Completely wide it out. Oh, really? Yep. Uh, it'll, it'll be all right. <laughs> okay. It was like I don't know where else to put it. Yeah, it, it, it gets better. Um, thank you guys. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Dion. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it's like you guys. That's how I'm gonna die. Is I'm up, like up piles of crafting stuff, and I'll love it. I'll be a dragon buried in my treasure hoard, and it's like I knew the beads would take me out one day. <laughs> so um, yeah. Gosh, so Aubrey, I'm. Are so you excited. Sending, uh, flat or rolled? Flat. We're putting in lots of cardboard to make sure that they don't like bend it. We're putting it in no bend folders. Um, because it's like, I don't know, I wanted to send it framed. Um, but I do not trust the postal service to not break the glass. Um so <laughs> um someone also asked that trying to send you cash to enter the the drone? You can, um, you can send a money order if you want, if you guys want to send us stuff, um, P.O. Box 238, Carthage, Missouri, 64836, um, because I understand not everybody wants to become a patron, but they might want to support what we're doing here on, um, you know, YouTube and Patreon and DeviantArt and all of that stuff, uh, and so you can send us, like, beads and things, let me figure something out real quick. The screen's gonna go sideways for a sec, so just bear with me, you guys. How do I, and I don't think I can do this. Yeah. There we go. Okay, nope. Sorry, I'm modifying the volume so it doesn't blow up the phone every time. <laughs> okay, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, uh, and also if you wanna do a one-time pledge, you can donate through um, PayPal. Our PayPal address is just backdoorthcreations at yahoo.com. Uh, I'll check those messages on Facebook after the live stream, Don. Thanks. Or Randy might be able to check them for me. I'm editing a video. So I can. Okay. Randy's juggling a few things over in his area. Oh, and can we get a shout out for rum chata and coffee, you guys? <laughs> I'm an adult. I can drink alcohol. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that was all the business. We'll announce the seed giveaway winners in a couple of days. So, hey, Buki. <laughs> I want to do a patron. Can I send cash for that? You can. Um, founder, you can uh, just send a money order or through PayPal. Wow, from Niagara Falls. Hey, Danielle. <laughs> So, does anybody have any, um, hey, do not forget sweet homemade jewelry, looking for 100 likes, now sitting at 92. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything for the live Q&A? <laughs> I was really hoping we could have a bonfire. It's not raining. It's just lightning, that's all. Yeah, we'll get struck by lightning. Darn it. <laughs> The question is, what is my sewing machine? This is my good friend, Boxer. He is a singer, heavy duty, that we got at Joann's. Um, let me kind of... I try to tidy up my stuff. I don't see the point anymore. Um, <laughs> we got him at Joann's for, like, I think 200 Um... I will be, do, be doing more scale mail videos, but this machine will punch through eight layers of denim like it's nothing. Not miss a single stitch. It's just, it's fantastic. I wanted something basic and powerful. It does over a thousand stitches per minute, and it's just, I mean, it has straight stitches, zigzags, some kind of like straight and then zigzag and straight and then zigzag. Um... 
but other than that it's so basic there's no computerized anything to mess up it's very basic but it's a workhorse and it's why we named it boxer after the uh workhorse from animal farm who like every time that the pigs were like okay you guys are gonna do more work boxer was just he'd bear down and be like i will work harder and then they sent him to the glue factory um but yeah Spoiler. so spoilers go read animal farm <laughs> so um oh, the question is how do you keep your fingers from becoming sore with all the wire work honestly i don't my hands hurt probably all of the time um like all the time my hands hurt uh i take baths in epsom salt and baking soda every night um <laughs> I use a uh, farmer's friend, like hand salve, uh, by Burt's Bees on my hands to try to keep my calluses from cracking. Um, oh, right on. No worries, April. It's like usually I don't mail off until the 5th because that's when Patreon, um, like for everybody in here who's one of my patrons, first off, thank you so much for your support. You guys have no idea how much you're making my dreams come true in like blowing my mind with y'all's generosity, but, um, I'll be sending out, uh, the prizes and gifts and things after the 5th, because that's when Patreon itself as a site actually gets done processing everything. Um, and that way too, it gives me time to hear back from everybody, so. Burt's Bees was a kid. <laughs> um, right, yes, some more questions. How are your veggies doing? My, the question is, how are my veggies doing? They're doing really well. Um, we're starting to get some cabbage moths on a lot of the kale and stuff, but I just, um, I haven't been able to find actually any of the caterpillars, but some of the leaves are getting kind of holed up. Uh, and so I just give them to the rabbits and chickens, and but there's still plenty left for me to harvest from. I think we harvested out the last batch of the first radishes, but we got some more coming in. The beans are starting to flower, which is really exciting. Uh, the peas have spent. The tomatoes got a little more beaten up in the hail than I originally realized because um, it took a couple of days to kind of find out what was going to die and what wasn't. Um, but I'm confident in their root systems. And so I've had tomatoes that get cut off by cutworms like at the stem and then regrow back up. So it's like if it's got a good root system going... It'll, it'll do its trick. Thank you, Sheila. I'll check out the Arnica. <laughs> yes. How long have you been doing wire wrapping? The question is, how long have I been doing wire wrapping? Um, and the, uh, the answer is nine years professionally. Um, and I kind of dabbled in it a little bit, like a real little bit before starting to do craft shows and stuff but whenever we started doing craft shows I was doing um like bead stringing and stuff so mm -hmm. will you be making more scale mail videos the question is will I be making any more scale mail videos and the answer is yes so many more like we've had some very specific requests we've had some generalized requests I've got a ton of custom work um, which is actually going to lead me into our next segment, which is the mail opening. Now this one, um, sorry, I don't want to show people's addresses, um, is not a gift to me. It's a mask that I'm building an outfit around. So, <laughs> oh, good gravy. <laughs> and I'm so excited to see this mask and to do this project. Um, but they sent the mask, oh god, that's beautiful. They sent the mask for, um, reference for the color match. Oh my goodness. Yeah, she was right. The colors just didn't do the same in the picture. I don't know if y'all can see, but this is a mask that I get to design a scale mail outfit around. Is you that not just page. beautiful? Yeah, if you guys are having problems with the page freezing and stuff, just refresh the YouTube window. Um... And hopefully that should take care of you. Oh, that is so cool. I cannot wait to work on this. That is beautiful. Oh, so I'm doing a whole scale mail piece and I'll be getting it entirely on film showing how I'm going to be matching this mask. So that's that's pretty exciting, you guys. I'm going to set this over here a little stay safe. I can take some questions for a minute. Okay. Next one is, what is the furthest 
northeast, you will come for a convention. We'd love to meet you guys. Um, the question is, what's the farthest northeast we'd be willing to travel for a convention? And honestly, mm -hmm. I'll go anywhere on this planet if we're invited as guests. Um, <laughs> so it's, um, we've gone mm -hmm. as far as Baltimore, Maryland, but that's when we lived in Tennessee. But, um, <laughs> hey, Crafty Mom. And it's just, uh, it's just a matter of fit, kind of fitting it into our schedule because currently we can only really do one show a month and still keep up with our online sales and kind of everything. So we're trying to gauge the growth of our business um, because it's, still, it's been exponential these past couple of months. Like we can't keep up. We took this past week off of just about everything else except for focusing on finishing up custom work and I'm still behind. And we've been like working it hard, you guys. And so it's um, except for I drew some pictures. <laughs> so um, there is that. Uh, next question. How do you budget your spending on materials you need for items you sell in your booth? Okay. The question is, how do I budget for materials for the items that I sell in my booth? Um, that's a really complicated question because there's a lot of stuff that it's like um I don't know I make poor decisions sometimes but then that just makes it all the more creative to have to figure out ah what am I going to do with this stuff that I bought that I didn't really need or how can I fill in a substitute for this thing that I really need that we just don't have or isn't here yet um typically though over the past nine years we're able to kind of gauge that it's like every time we place an order like say for wire we know we're gonna spend about seven to eight hundred and that will last us at least six months um so we'll like do a convention or we'll save up you know a little bit from each show and be like we know that twice a year we're gonna have to spend this much on wire so we set that aside and that way whenever the wire comes up we'll be like okay we bought the wire we know that on scale mail every time we place an order from the ring lord i know there's like bugs everywhere Mosquitoes. how are they getting in here is the door wide open I no i don't know um it's just so humid we don't have the air conditioner on because it was like nice until the storm faked it stupid storm sorry um what was i talking about <laughs> yeah but i mean keep in mind we function on a pretty large scale and this is also the budget we were functioning on when we were doing two or three conventions a month moving i mean the ants we used borax and in a sugar solution soaked up into cotton balls and kind of put them into their path and I'm still finding some scragglers. Like, I think it's going to take a couple more applications, but it's definitely, it's definitely helping, I think. Or it's not as bad. There's just a bunch of, like, mosquitoes in the house now because we're meat bags full of blood. Um, <laughs> okay, next question. Strange question. Is your leather vest a bra, a bra replacement? If so, is there a more subtle version? Big boobs have to support each other. Right on. Um, the question is about the leather bralette that I wear. Let me actually show you guys. I did a custom piece for a lady. Um, and she is a 40G. And I am only like a 36 double D. So the way that it's adjusted is on me, this is a full coverage. But on her we anticipate it's going to fit kind of like the, the half bust, like how mine is. And this is actually the one that I made in the video. So we can do a little bit more of a like fuller over the vest, like if that makes sense. And it does have these adjustable shoulders, so I could still bring it up more. I just have very high set bosom anyways because I've got like this stumpy little torso it's complicated um but yeah and so there you could totally design it to be you know fuller up but it's just I don't like stuff like right here on my neck so I don't wear a lot of like t-shirts and stuff so but it is a Broadway placement and I do show y'all how to um uh oh it tangled in the lacing on my other one oh, this is I'm life stuck now. this is life now this is okay I guess I'll have to make her another top with my little T-Rex arms. <laughs> okay, there it goes. <laughs> um, this is the top that I made in the tutorial that will be coming out on June 4th 
Um, <laughs> uh, part one, the making of the pattern. And so that way I show you actually how to make your own pattern that you could have it be all the way up to your collarbone. You could have it have a gorget. I mean, just like however you design it, I show you how to make those modifications to get it to do what you want it to do. Um, and then as always, I'll be answering questions in the comments on that video also. So, <laughs> Loads of hmm? Loads of okay, next question. Are you working on any new projects? The question is, am I working on any new projects? I am working on so many projects. Um, so many. Hopefully, they'll be coming out. Right now, we're focusing on a lot of um, just catching up on custom work. So, a lot of the tutorials I'll be having out in the coming week are like covering like the details of leather working, um, as well as um, just footage where it's showing you how I made the project, like uh, the peacock piece over here. I haven't actually gotten to work on any more, um, but like we're going to be expanding on it, hopefully Who soon. Is website person. I don't know what that means. Next one. Who is website person? Uh, I next. guess who runs the website. Oh, uh, next one. Okay. Can I make a necklace or, or more of a bracelet with 16 gauge wire? Um, I'm the, sorry, 26 gauge wire. The question is, can I make a bracelet or necklace with 26 gauge wire? Um, honestly, that's pretty thin. Um, if you do like cold closures, like wrapped loops and a lot of different things like that, um, then yeah, yeah, I think you could do it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's a thing that you could do. Next question. There are skirts I have seen where the back is longer than the front, but it looks like it's tied up that way, uh -huh. not normally shorter. How would you go about making that? Okay, the question is about skirts that are tied up to be shorter in the front. And the way that you would do that is you have like a circle skirt or an A-frame skirt. And you basically, like this one that I'm wearing here, you would take it and pretend like it has like a waistband. And there's this thing that you use that would like clamp onto the skirt and you just kind of take it and like kind of gather it up and put the little loop over it. I've seen people do it with like just safety pins. Um, some folks will actually sew or install like buttonholes or eyelets into the skirt and then they'll have like a little drawstring that they can actually like gather it and like raise it up in the front. So it's a really nice um, kind of way to diversify and I tell you what though at the Ren Fair having your skirt a little higher in the front really lets a bit of a breeze through and uh, especially if it's a summer event it makes being covered in a bunch of um costume yeah kind of like garters yeah thank you Jim <laughs> so but there's all sorts of stuff that I've seen people do <laughs> yeah have you been to Ohio? Would you would love to see you up close? Um, the question is, have we been to Ohio? Um, we have. We used to do Matsuri Con and uh, Ohio Con, which both of those are anime conventions in the kind of, what was it, Columbus? Yeah. Um, but they stopped letting us into Ohio Con. It's a juried show, and that's their prerogative, but we're, we're interested in getting in as guests so that we can come and teach y'all chain mail and costume design and wire wrapping and all different kinds of stuff there at the convention. So if y'all are in an area and know of an event that you think you'd like a, to have us at, let those organizers know that you want us there as a guest because we will totally show up. We'll come and teach panels. I'm actually, promo moment, um, we're going to be guesting at SawsomeCon in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, what are the days? End of June, end of this month. So it'll be June 30th through July 2nd. I'm teaching six classes or five class five classes there um wire wrapping chain mail costume design and we're doing a little bit of q a mixed in plus i'll be in the booth all weekend so you guys will be able to come by and kind of pick our brains and stuff so if any of y'all are going to be in the area for awesome con please come by and see us but that's something that we want conventions and different events to know that um well, no, they didn't ban us. It's just whenever we apply to be a vendor, they kind of go through and be like, oh, well, we have enough jewelry people. We don't, like, want you, like, we picked somebody else. And, like, there's a couple of other companies that on paper look exactly like us. Like, they carry chainmail and they carry leather and they carry wire wrapping. And so it's like, mm. <laughs> 
so meh but um which was a shame though because we loved Ohio Con. it was very well organized it was just one of our best shows of the year and uh <laughs> who knows you know I, I'm not privy to that information but no we even I personally have never been banned from conventions there were a couple of vendors that in I'm not going to talk too much about it because I was not there, but we had some friends who were at Phoenix Comic Con, and there was that sh that gunman, like, he didn't actually shoot anybody, but he had loaded guns and weapons on his body, um, and he had made it into the convention and was apprehended by the police, and so they put in all of these weapon policies and, like, prop bans, you know, because they didn't want people coming in with prop guns, complicating it for security. They were like, look, guys, we had an incident and so what they had the uh, vendors do who sell weapons um, is just bag them. Bag them up in like this big black trash bag, which is fine. That's usually what we give everybody their stuff in anyways. You know, bag it up in like a, a thank you bag kind of thing. Um, but just to let them know that it's enclosed. It's not like an open weapon, you know. Uh, and some of, the, some of the vendors didn't comply and so they got banned. So that's the only times I've ever heard of vendors getting banned from anything is whenever they're very specifically not complying. Yeah, well, it was even more than just safety tying. Like it got pretty, there's some articles and stuff online, y'all can do your own research, but it got pretty, um, pretty tense. <laughs> so. Would you ever visit Colorado? The question is, would I ever visit Colorado? And the answer is yes. I would love to go back to Colorado. I've been there three times to Winter Park on a ski trip when I was in marching band. I'd love to go during the summer and stuff to kind of see everything while it's blooming and not covered in snow. Um, yeah, Jim, I'm right there with you. If there's a rule for being a vendor, just as a vendor, we comply. Like, I mean, just follow the rules, guys. That's all it takes. But easier said than done. Um... Yeah, and to answer all of these questions, y'all, there is not a place in this world that I would not go just because I love traveling. Huh? Except Louisiana. Except Louisiana. No. <laughs> I'd go to Louisiana. I'm not. Randy doesn't want to. He doesn't. He had some bad experiences at the airports there, so. <laughs> I've just never had a good experience in Louisiana. He's just never had a good experience. Well, maybe, maybe it would be different. I'm not willing to risk it. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but for the most part, there's no place we wouldn't go. Um, next question. Would you please do a tutorial for a wire wrap ring using small cabochons, not beads? Yeah! I have a bunch of them and I don't really care for the tutorials I've seen so far. The question is, will I do a wire wrapping tutorial on how to make like a cabochon finger ring? Um, like an undrilled stone. <laughs> um, uh, can you block Buki? Um, yeah, and that's April, April saying that the guy was there. He was there to kill the Green Power Ranger. The Green Power Ranger's awesome. <laughs> um, next question? next question. Where do you buy your leather? Is there a link that you can give me? The question is, where do I buy my leather? Um, tandyleather.com and you can go to their website and find where there's a store locally and that way you can go and like actually get to pick it out in person because you can dig through the piles and like they're all like let's just say 80 bucks but you can find the one with the most square footage or, or the one that's like got the nicest you know so it's it's really nice I think to get to pick them out in person uh, next question I'm trying to make a chainmail bra for my wife and her friend mm -hmm. but they don't have the same size Okay. I'm making them out of 14 gauge, one fourth inner Ooh. diameter rings. That's going to be really how dense. How do I figure out how many rings I would need? Okay. The question is they're making bras out of 14 gauge, one fourth inch. Chainmail bras. Chain bras. Um, first off, I'm going to say uh, you're going to have a pretty difficult time doing the contraction yoke if you're doing the same tutorial, like following the tutorial that I posted. Um, because I have a hard enough time just getting the 16 gauge quarter inch to actually, um, like get, get all the rings to fit into the six and one. So that might be something that you want to kind of look at. Um, to find the sizing for the bra, what you would do is you want to get the full measurement of across that fullest point of the bust on the diagonal. So like from like the armpits to the center point get that measurement and cut it in half and then do like that's the length that you want 
the long side of your triangle to be before you make them and then kind of like does that make sense so like if it's 10 inches across the full part of the bosom then you're going to want the base of your triangle to be five inches so and then that way it'll give you some room for like coverage or you could err on the side of four and that'll give it to where it stops there and then you can do the expansion so i really hope that that makes sense oh, yeah. but um hmm? i might have to leave the live stream okay what's going on I can load it up over here. Give us a sec, guys. We're having some technical difficulty. Bit blah 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 blah. So your next technical difficulties. Is mm -hmm. where did you find calibrated glass cabochons? The question is, where do I find calibrated glass cabochons? AliExpress.com. They're where I get everything. Like if I'm looking for a 30 millimeter glass cabochon, I just type in 30 millimeter glass cabochon and then find whichever one has the best price and quantity for what I'm looking for. Okay, ready for the next one? Next question. I made one of your simple wire wrapped rings and now my friend wants me to send one to her. Do you have any okay. ideas on the best way to package it to send it? Thanks so much for the support. The question is about how to package your mail when sending it. It is totally worth investing in some little gift boxes or things because even if you mark it as fragile, it'll probably break. Um, I, for I years... Show them the box. No. That, uh... Oh, yeah, this right here, this was marked as fragile. And you see that really nice dent? I'm really glad this wasn't something like the leather mask was fine. But marked as fragile in a box. Still smushed. So just be careful because it's like I had the um the fossil pendant that I had posted I had mailed it the same way I've been mailing stuff for nine years and I had never had any breakage to this extent and it's like the fossil was decimated and it was just it was horrible <laughs> um uh the question is would this vest that I'm wearing be a good base to build off of for a full torso um, I could easily see extending it down to waist level, but it would need a little bit more boning. Um, but yeah, I can totally see, uh, that working out. And then because it's whenever it flares back over the hips that it starts to get a little complicated, but that's actually the next, uh, design that I'm going to be working on. So hopefully I'll be able to help you out with that. <laughs> the next one is, I have a huge old clematis. Mm -hmm. I've had it for over 12 years. Mm -hmm. My husband and I are thinking of selling our home. Do you think it's possible to dig it up and move it to our new home? The question is about a 12-year-old clematis um, that they're moving. Can they dig it up and take it with them? I... I'd be like, yeah, like Randy and I talk about like, if we ever move from this house, I'm going to have to get like a whole moving van just for all my plants. Cause I'm like, I'm not leaving that hosta here. That's my prize hosta. So, um, yeah, just whenever you're digging up, dig a big old root ball and just take as much of it with you as you can. Like you can probably trim it back some, um, but it should be, should be good. Also, if you dig it when it's dormant, as opposed to like, if you dig it in the fall, you're probably going to have better luck than if you dig it up like right now. Okay. Next question. Mm-hmm. How did you get to be such a nice person? <laughs> the question is, how did you get to be such a nice person? Um, I think that's very subjective. I'm actually a bit of a swamp troll, you guys. Like, I get hangry a lot, and I get really, like, like the sleepy version of hangry. Um, and, like, just grumpy. And so, I don't know. I, d I don't think I'm very nice. Um, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's what makes me, I don't know. <laughs> but I've... I've been treated a lot by other people in a way that I didn't like. And I'm sure that I've treated others in a way that they didn't like. But I know intention only gets a person so far. <laughs> this is Randy beats me a lot. Yeah, but that doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> no, you're fine, honey. Oh, you weren't even on the page. No, oh, he didn't even see stuff. you trolling, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kate, the Brawlet video will be coming out June 4th, so. <laughs> no, sorry, James is, James is a friend of ours. He's just giving us a hard time. Because <laughs> that's the thing, though, is I, I've been in abusive situations. It's like, 
I, I'm okay laughing about it. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like going back to being a nice person. It's like, I feel like no one's ever rich enough or pretty enough or anything enough to not be at least civil to other people. You know, it's like, <laughs> Next question. Uh, do you can stuff from your garden and use it year round? The question is, do I can stuff from my garden and then use it year round? And the answer is, I certainly do. I'm still actually eating off of some canned goods that I'd made. I had made, um, <laughs> good night, Jesse. Thanks for stopping in. Um, I made canned up chicken tortilla soup, um, venison and barley, and then venison and vegetable, like a really hearty, like, minestrone soup. Um, I just can them up in a, my pressure cooker because it's like I don't want to can all the stuff separately and then have to like put it together to then cook it and I'm really the like it's just Randy and I in the house so it's like I'll make like my 18 quart pot like do it no um I'll make my 18 quart pot but it's like I'm gonna be eating this for like a month if it's just the two of us eating so I'll can it up and then get to eat a bit of it here and there however I want Okay, next question. If I want to order cabochons, can I send the money to you and ask you to order it for me? <laughs> I don't understand the website, and you are used to ordering them. If not, no worries. Right on. The question is, if they, if you just send me money, will I send you cabochons? And it's like, if you become a patron, you can get cabochons as your monthly like gift thing. But for the most part, we try to not um, make like be be middlemen we kind of I'm not that great at time management and I, I really can see myself getting hung up and tripping over myself on that one so next question should I make a translation to a larger ring uh you sound about the the bras he's making. okay for um or should you just start over for the bras what I would do is you could actually use instead of doing the six in one around the yoke is um you can go down to like uh, 14 gauge 3 sixteenths, you know, or maybe, you know, and do a row of that and then maybe do 14 gauge 1 eighth, you know, and, and just keep that four in one pattern and kind of, you know, like, does that make sense? So instead of doing the six in one, you're actually decreasing the ring size. Um, Cause with that 14 gauge, that's going to be tight looking. Like that is going to be so cool. <laughs> okay, I have to read this one. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or just kick back with a cartoon and... What? Duck-sized horses. <gasps> like little horses? Oh, I don't want to fight them, though. They're just wee bitty. Like little Sebastian. Like little Sebastian? Oh, that, that'd be adorable. I, I... Or do you want to get high and smoke a doobie? No. So you got to slit those horses through. I've got to fight those horses, man. I don't do drugs, so... <laughs> Except for like caffeine and alcohol and chocolate. <laughs> okay, next question. I'm really curious about how you know to do so much of a wide variety of things. I do too, but I'm twice your age and have the years to back it up. Right on. The question is, how do I manage to do a um, such a wide variety of things? And I'm going to be 100% like transparent with you all. For the longest time, like, so much of what I do is fueled by self-loathing and being very defiant, <laughs> if that makes sense. So it's like, yeah, you're just garbage. It's like, no, I'm not. See, I'll try real hard. And it's like, ah, you're still cabbage. And so there's constantly this, like, depression battle of, like, crushing mediocrity, but, like, wanting to try my best. And, like, it's... It's a hot mess, you guys. Um, so, and I'm really curious is basically what that boils down to. And I've been very blessed to have Randy in my life for 12 years now. He has supported and encouraged and just helped me focus on, um, like, if I am curious in something like, like gardening or pursuing my music after high school, because I played the flute since, like, fifth grade, and that was something that it was, like, really, I thrived on that, um, on that validation of if I practice really hard, then I get better. And it's, like, that gave me something tangible 
to, it's like, so whenever I'm depressed or in a really dark place, it's like, it gives me something that I have control over that it's like, no, I can focus on this and I can do it. And I got addicted to that, man, I did it. I did it. I did it. You know, it's like, yes, let's do more. And so, um, it's, you know, and so and I'll see something now and be like, oh, I wonder, I wonder if I could do this. I wonder what that's like, you know, and Randy helped me again to make it not a competition between me and someone else, but like me and me of a minute ago, me of a day ago, me of a year ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, you probably should finish your pre-cal. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that's, that's how I do so much different stuff is I'm insatiably curious and really self-loathing and depressed so it's like and battling that so it's like a lot of just proactive you know uh we, it was a couple of years ago but I was talking to Randy about it and I was like I don't feel like I suffer from depression you know it's like because I'm, I'm fighting it it's like I feel like a Valkyrie you know in like battle and you know just like you know, some days I win you know, that battle, and it's like, and we party, man, it's awesome, and it's like Valhalla, you know, and we did it, you know, and then other days, it's like, damn, like, this was rough, <laughs> and, um, and uh, it's just, and some days, you know, it's like we lost the battle, but not the war, and we gotta keep fighting, so it's just kind of going with it, rolling with the punches, and it's, that's how... I don't let being depressed or being, you know, anything define me. It's like, that's not, that's something, that's a, that's just something that happens. You know, it's human, it's natural, but that's not who I am. I'm, I'm a creator, you know, and it's like, in the darkness, we make our own light. And the more we share it, the brighter it gets. So it's like, that's, <sighs> that's what we focus on here. So, or try to. And sometimes I just curl up and cry and watch Parks and Rec on the couch and like eat a bunch of pizza. So... <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> Next question. Do you believe in the one true God? Next question. That's it. Right on. <laughs> and you're completely right, Kelly. I'm gonna find my fan. It's like a million degrees. We could shut the door and turn on the air. No, I'm not turning the air conditioning on. It's June. I think we can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have more mail to open. Treat yourself. Like, we're re-watching all of Parks and Rec. Bye, April. Ah, band practice, right on. That's cool. I hope you have a fantastic night. So this is from my good friend Kaz, who actually made this beautiful bracelet. <laughs> You've got me out of my rut, Vaughn. Excellent. I'm so glad, Crafty Mom. <gasps> ah, she uses the same wrapping paper. No letter. There's no letter from her this time. Okay. Y'all. Orange or green? Which one should we open first? <laughs> first one to comment. Green. Green. Okay. That was <laughs> green, green. <laughs> green one's the first one, y'all. Ooh. This is so exciting. Another one. I'm spoiled, you guys. Same colors, different colors. Different colors. Oh my gosh. Look at the, how beautiful that is. Hi, Savannah and Chelsea. <laughs> Ooh, now I got something from my other wrist. Because these are like the most perfect bracelets ever. Thank you so much, Kaz. Oh, so pretty. Dual wielding. Ooh, now I get to open the orange one. <laughs> Randy's is over there like, she's so spoiled. <laughs> Bye, Dr. Jade. We'll see you around. <gasps> Ooh, another fairy bottle. Are they seed beads? Yep. Seed beads, you guys. Like, for reals. No. Uh-oh. Now this, I'm a unicorn. <laughs> I should have told her I have an exceptionally big head. Wait, is it wrapped around the bottle somewhere? Nope. Uh-oh. Uh, it's not wrapped around the bottle. That's the thing that keeps the cork uh. from, like, the cork will come out. God, 
God, these are so cool. You'll see that it has like a little charm that's hanging down that's still attached to it so the bottle, so the cork won't be lost if it comes out. That's so cool. So what I'm actually going to do on this one is I'm going to put some extender chain to wrap it around. That way it'll just sit like that and it'll be half seed beads and half chain. And that way it'll still fit me in my big old head. Like I have like, I can't even like Randy's hat or anything like that. Like it's, it's not embarrassing. It's just very large. Oh, can you fit it over your head? Be gentle with it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It got hung up on his ears. Now Randy and I have matching bottles. Thank you, Kaz. <laughs> hey, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's green yeah. alligators. As long as you some Humpty Dumpty back camels in the chimneys. Ah, uh, I like that poem. Oh, thank you, baby. <laughs> I do. Well, it's it's not even like because it condenses down a lot, but <laughs> ginormous noggin. Randy calls me his little water baby. <laughs> I like that song, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, all the craftiness has to fit somewhere. <laughs> ah, Kaz, thank you so much. You guys are too kind to me. Like, honestly, I'm very blessed. <laughs> ah, thank you, Laura. I wanted to, like, I was experimenting a little bit with, again, more, uh, more different camera angles, just trying to get ideas of, um, what works and what doesn't. And then we had quite a few folks who were, like, kind of vulgar about it, and I was like, Dude, y'all are lucky that I have clothes on at all. Whenever it's hot outside, like, I'm I'm in like just just one of these things. So, oh. <laughs> so yeah. Because you refuse to put up blinds. Do and yeah, and right, that's because we refuse to put up blinds. So I'm not gonna block the sun out of the house. So hey, I'm glad you found our channel and that you like it. Right. Well, you know, and it's. I don't know. I'm exceptionally comfortable with the human body, and it's uh, one of my friends who was born in Germany and lived in England for a while and before moving over to the U.S. was like, you know, Canada got the French, you know, Mexico got the Catholics, y'all got the Puritans. Good job. <laughs> and so I was like, oh yeah, it's fair. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know, necessary parts is like subjective to like, this is, the, should I tell them what? about my childhood? Up it's up to me. I grew up at a nudist camp, you guys. <laughs> so it's, um, I don't know. Like, it was said before by one of my friends, it's like, well, I knew you were a free spirit, but and it's like, no, for three years of my life, I didn't have, uh, have clothes on. <laughs> so, and it was as a kid, too, so, like, it's really ingrained in me. Yeah, for sure. It was, um, Cedar Trails in Peebles, Ohio. Y'all can actually look it up. It's a fantastic campground if you guys ever go out that way <laughs> and want to, uh, do what? There is nudity on the site. There is nudity on their website. It's, like, not safe for work. But it's, like, it's just, we're just humans, you guys. <laughs> so, a bunch of hairless monkeys. Um, does anybody have any other crafty questions or anything like that while we hang out? getting bees. Ooh, the question is, have I ever considered getting bees for honey and pollination? And the answer is yes, but no, because Randy is allergic. Like, he swells up like death whenever he gets stung. So, um, I personally am not going to get to keep bees. But, that doesn't mean I'm not going to plant pollinators and try to attract them into the garden. So, <laughs> And I try to do my best to support uh, my friends who do keep bees and, like, buy honey from them and stuff. Question is, what is your favorite thing from your garden? My chickens. If I had to keep everything, if I had to get rid of everything else, I would keep my chickens. They are just the coolest. <laughs> it's really hard on your system, though, to take an EpiPen. Um, ooh, well, here lately, my chickens haven't come out of their broodiness yet. Uh, no, I actually like the chickens better than my rabbits. They're way more interactive. They don't bite me as much as the rabbits. Like, whenever my does are getting close to nesting, they get vicious. Like, they're in, like, full-on mommy mode, and they're like, back up, hairless monkey. I'm like, okay, sorry, I just wanted to give you food, you 
stinking mammal. Um, <laughs> but no, the chickens are just delightful. Um, I'm, I typically get from my four chickens, I was getting four a day. Um, and then now I have the three, uh, pullets that still aren't laying yet. So yeah, no, not rude at all, Laura. Uh, the, my leather vest does substitute for a bra, and it's very comfortable. Whenever I take it off at the end of the day, my neck and shoulders aren't tense. I don't have the red marks of where it bites in on the side the way that a regular bra does. And quite frankly, I really like that kind of like underwire push-up effect, but without the underwire and the push-up. So it's actually like it gets them up out of the way. So whenever I'm like gardening and doing yoga and stuff, it's like it's my favorite. I've worn this every day for two years so yeah no pokey wires nothing it's fantastic and it makes me feel like a pretty princess so <laughs> ah that'd be fantastic Jillian hmm? how do you prevent marks from marring your wire hmm. when you can't use nylon pliers the question is how do I keep marks like how do I keep my pliers from marring up my wire whenever I'm not using nylon jaw there's a product out there called Tool Magic that I used to use, but um, over the years I've just gotten to where it just doesn't, I don't know, I just, I guess, got the hang of it. And um, But starting off, I really recommend um, Tool Magic. And like one jar of it has lasted me a decade. Like you kind of like uh, in, in the evening dip your uh, plier tips into it and then kind of hang them somewhere where they can dry and cure like overnight and then you know the next evening you can go through and craft with them and it's like plasti dip kind of but a little it's clearer and a little bit more durable so it is actually raining outside now so next question right on <laughs> and that says lol mine have fallen so far down i could throw them over my shoulder the older i get the more i hate them and that's something is that I, I kind of joke a lot and it's like I had to gain 80 pounds to even grow boobs and it's like I love like a lot of people are like well you're just doing that for attention it's like dude I love these things like they're beautiful I, I've always wanted boobs just like the aesthetic of them and the feel of them and they make me it just they're a part of me I grew them um and one day they're gonna be like I lived at a nudist camp with you. I've seen all kinds of body types, all kinds of ages, all kinds of walks of life. I know what time and gravity is going to do to this. <laughs> it's not going to end well for anyone involved. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, but yeah, it was one day I'm going to have to roll them up, put them in my bra. Next question. <laughs> have you ever caught someone shoplifting it at your booth? How do you handle that? Um, the question is, have we ever caught someone shoplifting at our booth and how do we handle it? Well, um, if you've seen pictures of our booth setup, um, which I can actually show you guys because I have the internet right over here. Um, the pictures of uh, the booth from... Mm, words are hard. Uh, Facebook and it's in Fayetteville and it's in the art center. Post to Christmas past, the very first craft show we ever did. I can actually show you guys the pictures from our first craft show. This is gonna be so exciting. Um, Next question. Why you look that up? Yeah. How much do you charge for the Rolex vest? I need one of the very top heavy, which causes neck and back stress. Right on. The question is, how much do I charge for my leather bralettes? They start at around 150 for a small and then kind of work their way up from there. But they have a lifetime repair and resize warranty. So we understand it's an investment. But quite frankly, if you have over double Ds, boobs are so expensive anyways. Like just getting bras that fit. Well, it's like $80 for a bra from like Lane Bryant or something. So unless you get, um, you know, a... Uh, like a, a sale or a deal or something, it can be really hard to find something that fits properly. So y'all already know how much of an investment a, a bra is. Boop, boop, boop. La, la. Is it in an album? Well, I guess I can move this over here now. You had another vendor shoplift from you, Don? What? Like, we never had that happen, but we've always been real close, like tight on our money box. We've had our, our phone stolen during setup at Dragon Con last year. Um, yeah, set up. But there were quite a few vendors who had gotten their stuff stolen. 
There's the pictures. Life <sighs> is a book waiting to be written. Life is a who to what? Your life is a book waiting to be written. Mine is? That's what they said. Well, that's nice. You don't agree? I think that is very accurate. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys. If I can. Hmm. Uh, can I get my charger cord over here? Oops. Uh, oh darn it, I clicked on the thing. Why are you, why you do that, Facebook? Um, it is 9.30. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you guys can see, but this was our very first craft show. Okay. Hey Randy, can they see? Oh, I can oh. see in the reflection of the screen. Well, if it would load. Bow, bow, bow. Really, Facebook? You're going to take about 2.3 million years to open this right now? I'm so sorry. They've also sorry. had customers who let their kids break stuff. Hmm? They've also had customers who let their kids break stuff. Dang. I don't know. It sounds like y'all got all the nightmare customers because it's like we've had, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, the pictures are on my Facebook page. Um, they're under my album Vending 2008-2009. Um, yeah, and it's, it can be kind of hard, like, there was one time that, um, like, we've only ever had a couple of things stolen over all these years, and there was one time that someone else in our booth, booth thought someone else's kid was stealing, but they were just putting, like, a gum wrapper in their purse, and I was watching them put the gum wrapper in the purse, like, being like, we don't have anything that was shaped like that or that color. So it's like, but they saw me looking at the kid. And then the mom saw us looking at the kid and got really offended. And I was like, but, but no, she was like mega offended. And I was like, I'm so sorry, but, you know, she's, and the kid was like, no, and, but it was just an awkward situation. If you guys are having problems with the screen, like, freezing up, you might need to refresh the page. <laughs> So, sorry, it's like, it is telling me that I have a very bad connection. Our phone's kind of overheating a little bit. Um, but that's just how it goes. But, yeah, I can show you guys. I'm actually going to plug this for a sec. Okay. So, here you can kind of see. Yeah, it's screen capture. Here, <laughs> go us. Um, this was our very first booth setup. We actually still have. See, there's Randy's butt again. He's so cute. We still have a lot of these displays. God, I haven't seen that in ages. I bet we have that buried somewhere. Unless we gave it away. We ended up giving away a lot of these displays, too. But um, I was doing, like, crochet bags and stuff. We still use those same earring displays. God, he's precious. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, we still use these same pendant flats, but with ring inserts. Um, it's probably, like, really blurry. The... <laughs> Yeah, it's, you guys can go and check it out on my Facebook page, and it just shows, like, um, like, that's how it started, and then we have these, like, bracelet humps that we had made from PVC pipe that have, like, little hooks sticking out of the side, and so we would put, like, a bracelet on there hooked onto the hook, and that way if somebody tries to take it, it just takes the whole display and makes a huge mess, and, like, they panic and run away, and that's happened a few times, but for the most part... We have it designed very specifically so that Randy can basically keep an eye on everything by himself if he has to. So, you know, we got to have, like, bathroom breaks and stuff. Um, next question. Oh, they were buffering during their answers about mm -hmm. the chicken eggs. Um, the an uh, about the chicken eggs, I get about four a day from my four laying chickens. Some days it'll be less, but I've never gotten more than four a day. Like, um... Because, like, Poppy just came into laying, but Nutmeg is kind of coming to the end of her laying cycle. Um, we have a Note 4. And the best advice that I can give you guys, like, that's our phone. It's a, a Samsung Note 4. But the best advice that I can give you is, even if you feel like you have a crappy phone, even if you feel like it's not a very well-edited video, even if it's, I mean, everything, ignore all that stuff and just start doing it. Because there's so many people out there who have, they've planned the plan, they've gotten the stuff for it, and they just, that hardest step 
is making and posting the first video is taking that leap into it and actually diving in and pushing that ball and getting it rolling it's for me in gardening it was just planting that seed was the hardest part i can do all the bed prep i can do all the planning but actually planting the seed was just that's when the terror takes hold and it's like ah, oh, i got him right on the brink of this either working or not working but if you never take that first step then it's never gonna work um so just, just do it you guys like you can do this like honest like randy and i've been faking this stuff for years until it actually started where like we don't know what we're doing you know my first videos here on youtube were taken with a webcam that wouldn't focus on anything and the audio is crap and it's like but we learned kind of <laughs> and just you know <laughs> uh, the question is have you considered working in tv your enthusiasm is infectious um maybe like if somebody's like hey come be on my show i'll be like okay but for the most part i'm not i'm not really that good at meeting time commitments on a regular basis so like Maybe if it's like a one-time thing or like for a weekend, because it's like I can do conventions because it's only for that three or four days. I still have a relative amount of control. There's only like, I only have to show up and then leave. There's not like a whole bunch of stuff happening in between, but it's like, I don't do well. Like when I was miserable in high school and working day jobs, like it was like, are you serious? I have to do this again the same way tomorrow? What? <laughs> Um, the question is, what is your favorite stone for your... I've got a lot of questions. Okay, can I answer this one? Yeah. Jim asks, what is your favorite stone for yourself or to work with for sale? Not gonna lie, probably Labradorite. I've never met a piece of Labradorite I didn't like. Okay. What's the question, Zandy? Do you ever make shoes or boots from leather? I'm doing the Viking costume for the Colorado Renaissance Festival and I want to try and make my own boots. Right on. The question is, have I ever made my own boots or shoes out of leather? Um... I made a pair of moccasins out of a kit back in high school and I really liked them except for like if I was working work, like walking on like a smooth floor they would like they had no tread or traction um and then uh but I really want to get into making my own shoes and kind of stuff so um I don't know if I get more into shoe making I will definitely share my knowledge with y'all so, next question? Did you get a haircut? Even if you just took it up, it looks cute. <laughs> no, I trimmed my bangs a bit, and, like, they came out all wonky. And then I also haven't, like, washed my hair in, like, a while. Like, I've been taking a lot of baths, and I don't like to wash my hair in the bathtub, because then I get, like, covered in hair. <laughs> so, it's, my hair is kind of a mess. Um, but thank you. I'm glad you think it's cute, because I'm... Yeah, next question. <laughs> Your awesome sauce. Do you do any crochet by chance? Thank you. Um, the question is, do I do any crochet? And the answer is, yeah. I, l I love to crochet, but it's um it's pretty time consuming, and I can't really uh like read a pattern very well. So I kind of just make it up as I go and be like, oh, this looks like it works. So um, because the level of pattern uh -huh. reading that I can function at is like down here, and then the level that I want. To, like that I is like the project that I want to do is like right here and I'm not willing to sit down and kind of close that gap so it's my own fault <laughs> next question do you use the question is do I use Dremel tools um yeah it's I love them they're great uh, I have like a little drill bit and stuff hey thank you so much Rick I really appreciate your support <laughs> yeah Sorry, Kelly said that there's crocheting and knitting is so time intensive and the yarn itself is so expensive. It's just, yeah, it's huge time investment. Like, so much. Next question. Do you ever fall in love with your pieces and cry when they sell? Um, the question is, do I ever fall in love with my pieces and then cry when they sell? Um, I kind of. Like, I don't know, I really am financially motivated for a lot of this stuff. And so it's like, I'll have pieces that I really love, but it's like, I get pictures of all of them and I've got like thousands of pictures in my computer and it's like, I'll go through and every time I see a piece like out in the wild or I see a picture of it that I haven't looked at it in a while, it brings up, like, I remember that day 
the, or days that I like I remember vividly making that piece so each one's a little time capsule of, of my life and so it's really nice to kind of get to spread that around and like send pieces of myself and my existence out with people and the joy that they get from it you know and so it's um it's it's less about the thing and more about the experience you know of being like oh I got to make it <laughs> okay next question soldering Ah, uh, the question's about soldering. I wish I knew how to solder. Um, none of my jewelry has soldering in it, and I really, like, am deeply feeling the need to learn how to do that, because I think it'll help me kind of, like, bump it up to the next level. Um, but not yet. <laughs> I have to catch up on my custom work first. <laughs> next question. How do you prevent other artists from copying your work? The question is, how do I prevent art other artists from copying my work? Um, and this is something that's that's a complicated question because they're like I have lost friendships over someone feeling like I copied their work or me feeling like they copied my work or it's like it's impossible. Like that is it's such a dark road to go down. Because it's like, whenever you think about it, it's like, I didn't invent chain mail. I didn't invent basket weaving or wire weaving or any of this stuff. And it's just like, so it's, it's, I had to actually, that's part of why I started doing these tutorials was so that I could develop a detachment that it's like, this isn't actually mine. You know, it's like, I created it, but everything that I've seen, even if it's like two in the morning scrolling through Pinterest, seeing somebody else's work, there's a little bit of that person's work in my work now because I saw it it's there you know and it's like it's really easy to real quick get ugly about you know <laughs> kind of stuff and it's so I, I give my my designs away now you know in these tutorials because it's like look if you guys watch one of my tutorials you bought the materials you made it with your bare hands you know it's yours now you know, and it's, I just hope that, that whenever you're selling it or if somebody sees it, that you'll be just as open and just as sharing with them as what I am with you. That way they'll learn too and it'll be a good experience for them. And maybe the things that one day I might be scrolling through, you know, and see somebody whose work started with one of my tutorials, but now they've gone above and beyond anything that I could have done and I'll get to learn from them. And it helps the whole the whole community um, grow and you know it helps kind of nurture a little bit more of like oh Randy I've got one job on this ship it's stupid but I'm gonna do it <laughs> I love you so much <laughs> yeah yeah, it's, you just have to let it go. Like, if I, now, if somebody's coming through, though, and being like, yeah, this is my design, I'm gonna patent it, and they get, like, they're being a jerk about it, it's like, excuse me? Yeah, Galaxy Quest. <laughs> um. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll step off my soapbox a bit, but that's, that's really how I feel about it, is if people are gonna be, sometimes people are just jerks, you guys, and you gotta just, bleh. <laughs> Okay, next question. Do you have any tattoos? I do not have any tattoos, is the question. And to follow up, the only piercings that I have are the two little holes in my ears. <laughs> next question. Uh, did you ever try bobbin lacing or tatting? No. The question is, have I ever tried bobbin, bobbin lacing or tatting? And no, but I very first craft show I ever went to as a kid I was watching this lady do tatting and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever and I would love to learn and I haven't I don't know why <laughs> I should try that <laughs> next question the question is um, do you ever think you'll hire on extra help um, Randy doesn't have any tattoos or piercings at all well he has he has a bit of pencil lead stuck in his hand from when he was a kid, but I don't think that counts. It's fine. This is prison tats. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, we've actually uh, tried hiring help. We have one friend that we kind of keep on retainer a bit. Um, that uh, 
like comes and helps us at conventions but it's um we we found out very quickly that uh nobody will work as hard for our business as what we do and randy and i are kind of crappy bosses because we're very strict we expect the same level of commitment enthusiasm and competence and it's like we're bringing our a game uh we expect our help to bring their a game as well and so it's like we had to kind of step back and be like no we're not gonna hire anybody because it has never ended well um so <laughs> next question <laughs> Do you like Tiger's Eye or Bronze Knight? Ooh. Shiny Sparkly too. The question is, do I like Tiger's Eye or Bronze Knight? And I love, oh my gosh, like, not even kidding whenever I say there's not a stone I have ever met that I was like, meh, I don't like you. Like, y'all can send me a bucket of gravel, and I'd be like, gravel! <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> right on. I hope I get to be 40 years older than what I am one day. That'd be nice. <laughs> The question's about Japanese braiding. Um, I haven't tried it, but again, I would love to. Like, I always love learning new techniques because you never know when, like, like for me, polymer clay actually helped me with my leather working. So it's, and leather working in turn helped me kind of think more three-dimensionally with my polymer clay as well. So, um, that was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, next question. Next question. Whew, you got a lot of them built up. How do you ever... So, how much cash do you take to shows? I'm doing my first show in October, and I don't know how much cash to take. To That's a really good question. The question is, how much money do we bring with us for, like, making change um, whenever we go to shows? Uh, and I hope nobody steals our money box after saying this. But <laughs> it's we, we come with $200, in, two hundred dollars in two fifty in the money box. A uh, hundred and twenties, fifty and tens. Yeah, I'm answering you. Hey, this is live. This is live streaming right now, unless you're watching it later, in which case it's not. But if you post questions down below, I'll still answer them. So, <laughs> sorry. It's the future. When? Just then. Soon? No, you missed it. <laughs> sorry. Um, what was I saying? Money box. Right. 120s, 50 and 10s, 50 and 5s, and 50 and 1s. Um, and that way we kind of do that. It's a little bit more than what we need. Um, but that way we can break a hundred right from the bat. And if we need to, like, if something happens on the way there, we're like, we have $250 of backup money. So, yeah. <laughs> Where did, what did I kick? Okay. Next question. I'm all out of coffee. Have you ever done eating and embroidery? The question is, have I ever done beaded embroidery and jewelry? Um, I've done some beadwork, but I haven't gotten to do as much bead embroidery as what I would like. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, and I use Square Swiper for taking card transactions um, while it shows, too. So that's always good. And then PayPal has their PayPal Here version as well. So next question. So what about bracelet size? Have you ever made child size bracelets? But I found the seven inches is pretty much good to go for me for adults. Typically, um, <laughs> never leave home without your towel. Um, the question is about bracelet sizing. Most of our stuff we make to around seven and a half inches. Um, but we usually give it about this much of extender to where it could go to eight or it could go down to seven because that fits most adults. And then we do, um like in booth adjustments as well and then uh mm, for children like five inches is actually pretty good but like a kid's wrist about ping pong ball sized around so if that helps um ooh, next question if you had to wash either brad pitt or conan o'brien's hair which would take longer and why i'm not answering that next question Okay, are you a full-on introvert, or is there something that turns you on the need introvert time? Okay, the question is about um, my extrovert-introvert balance. Um, 
I'm a social butterfly with hermit tendencies. Um, it's like I do thrive on like interacting with other people and like especially other creative types. Like it's like, oh my gosh, y'all blow my mind. Um, but I do have to have time to recharge and process it and kind of like, I don't know, I get really kind of antisocial um, when I'm crafting only in that I'm so focused that it can almost seem offensive <laughs> that it's like because it's like I'm just so focused um if that makes sense so hey Jade <laughs> next question did you get jumbo double yoinkers next question I don't know what that means. Me That's it. okay you sure mm -hmm. oh the question was how do I make that noise with my mouth the Bite your lip a bit. With your top lip and then force air into the bottom of mm -hmm. the So that, um, like any child in the world can do it, I'm sure. Um, I don't know. I like, like, I didn't get to like make noises a lot as a kid. My mom was real particular about like, stop that, stop it, stop it. <laughs> and so it's like, as an adult, it's like, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's an extroverted introvert. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's like, and I do like, you know, going out and playing in my dirt and like kind of hoop dance and like, I don't know. It's just, ooh, uh, question is, what is our drink of choice? Randy's a Dr. Pepper fan. And as you will see in some of my videos, I'll, you'll, as you'll see in some of his videos, which by the way, guys, if you enjoy, like, I like Randy. I think y'all might like Randy. Go check him out on his channel, Randy Vaughn. You'll get to see him and I game together a little bit. He started his channel back in March, so it's still relatively new. Um, <laughs> it's too peopley outside. <laughs> but um, go check him out. The channel's Randy Vaughn. He's pretty cool. He has a Patreon as well where he does art giveaways and some different things like that. So <laughs> do it. Donkeys, are we there yet? Donkeys? <laughs> are we there yet? Uh -huh. I don't understand. I guess they're talking about all the different animals. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, alcohol, if we imbibe. Um, well, I'm lamenting that I'm out of coffee with rum chata in it. So that's, I really like rum. Like mango rum and pineapple rum and coconut rum. But I like it like mixed into like drinks. <laughs> oh, I love Randy. He's awesome. <laughs> Donkey. <laughs> Um, and then Randy, what alcohol do you like? Har Mike's Hard Lemonade, he actually really likes the black cherry. Mike's Hard Lemonade. Hard. But he doesn't drink hard. Like, the, um, actually, mead is really good. Yeah, I'll drink anything basically all day. Like, um, but Randy's, uh, has, like, in his family, there is a tendency to a severe alcohol, like, reaction, like, allergy. Um, so Randy just doesn't really risk it. He's never gotten drunk. Like, he'll just drink a little bit. He's like, oh, I remember. It, it takes him, like, four hours to drink a beer. So. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> you wanna, mm -hmm. Oh, that sucks. Can I have one? Of yours? Yeah, please. Yeah. And can you bring me, like, the triple sec bottle? Oh, Jesus. What? I'm a, I'm a girl with needs. Don't judge me. Randy? <laughs> so yeah, I also, I don't know, I like anything that tastes good, and I have pretty varied tastes, so. What is your favorite Disney movie? Yeah, it's, I'm either drinking coffee, water, or alcohol. Does Marvel movies and Star Wars count as Disney movies? Thank you for opening it for me. I can never get these open. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Who's making waffles? There's waffles? I don't see any waffles. <laughs> Sorry. You know, and we didn't used to drink. I have to blame our friends Ben and Tracy, who in introduced us to yummy stuff. <laughs> Okay, so either no to the Marvel. Okay, so Marvel and Star Wars don't count as Disney movies? Yeah. Ugh. Is Nightmare Before Christmas Disney? No, that's a I don't think part. so. It's a... Mm. Jeez. 
She's I think I gotta go the, with Sword in the Stone. Sword in the Stone. Randy says is his favorite. Um, gosh. I don't know, you guys. That's a hard question. And honest, like, I haven't... Don't judge me. I'm getting all delicate and judged. Um, I haven't actually ever seen Beauty and the Beast. Either no. of them. The old one or the new one. Oh, psh, don't be that way. I haven't seen Cinderella. I yeah. haven't seen The Little Mermaid. Like, also, for those of y'all who've been around and, um through this live stream. Did you not have a little sister growing up? No, I didn't. I was the youngest. Um, whenever we lived at the campground, we didn't have television. Like, I missed the whole Pokemon era. The whole, like, we just, we didn't have television. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, Robin Hood, probably. Oh, man, I don't know. I like them all, you guys. Like, I can't pick a favorite. That's a tough Call. Yeah, I think you like Robin Hood better than the Sword in the Stone. Yeah, it was definitely more influential on that. Yeah. Not okay, can you take the triple sec away from me? Yeah. If you've never seen it, you need to see Brave. <gasps> Brave is really good. And see, that's the thing. I can't remember what's Pix Pixar. Is that Pixar or Disney? Like animated? I don't know. Well, Movie Disney night at my house. <laughs> Castle in the sky. Yeah. Does does a uh, Miyazaki films count? Like, I don't know. <laughs> so it's, I don't know. I'm too much of a fan of a lot of different things, but it's like, I'm trying to think. What was... There's well, some that are really influential that I've watched a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. I do own this. <laughs> but I don't own Sword in the Stone. So. Black Cauldron is an awesome movie with Gurgi. Gurgi? Lilo and Stitch is pretty awesome. I have not actually watched Pete's Dragon. I'm a bad person. It's official. Maleficent's really good. I love the stuff that they've been doing with all of that here lately. <laughs> Sorry, this is, I think this is just degenerated into drunk people hanging out, and I think that's fantastic. <laughs> but if anybody does pop in and have any, like, crafty questions... Which avatar? <gasps> <laughs> Someone said Avatar, and I was like, wait, which one? Which Avatar? Or is it the one with the blue people in space? Fern Golly, that was really good. Mm. And yeah, it was. I like the, I don't know, the costume aesthetic. My favorite Disney movie hasn't been made yet. Oh? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> okay, the question is, I like the blue people. <laughs> <laughs> you watch television shows what's your favorite um probably right now my favorite television show is parks and rec um but that's another one that it's like i don't know i love that falling and new uh falling oh my gosh have you seen randy's collection no about what your movies oh this is just what i have downstairs this is just what he has downstairs like i don't know if you guys can see all those DBZ. He has all the DBZ VHSs that makes like the faces on the side. Oh, that's upstairs though. That is upstairs. But it's, um, I don't know. We want to get, um, I need to slow down. This is kind of. <laughs> Doctor Who. I actually haven't caught up on Doctor Who as much as I would like. I only got into, um, like season two, the second Doctor. Sorry. I feel bad getting tipsy on camera. What have you been watching? I don't know. Not the second Doctor. Is it not the second Doctor? No. Was it the third Doctor? It's like the seventh. It's not the seventh? No, what I've seen of the Big Bang Theory I really like. So, that's pretty cool. So, <laughs> Oh, a Doctor Who? <laughs> who? Who does he have the Star Trek collection that has the boxes that make a picture? Don't. No, he doesn't. Yeah, I'm all out of water. All my water has alcohol in it. <laughs> oh, I, you know, probably one of, well, that's not, Willow? Have y'all seen the movie Willow? That's really good. <laughs> well, there's a bug in my ear. <laughs> I've never actually been hungover, you guys. Never anything <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Willow? Yeah. 
Have you ever created a fairy house at the base of a tree, basically adding to the faux door to the trunk to look like they live in a tree? Nope. <laughs> um, yes, it's very good. Thank you. I'm glad you like my hair. I just have it up in a bun. We actually went on a walk for like an hour today. <laughs> the never ending story and the never ending story too. Um, but no, probably Willow is one of my favorite all time movies right now in my current condition. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're drunk. And when you're drunk. You're drunk. You and when you're drunk, you forget I'm in charge. That way. <laughs> 30 Thursday is going to be a regular time for live feed. Maybe. Late night, kind of getting a... Fifth Element's really good. Have y'all read the Willow books? <laughs> Sorry, I feel so bad. Like, I'm being totally unprofessional right now. I'm supposed to be, like, teaching you guys stuff. <laughs> uh, the question is, will you take us on a tour of your garden soon? Yeah. <laughs> Not tonight, though. It's raining and dark. <laughs> okay, you ready for another question? Next question. What was the reason for keeping the buns? Just pets or for the garden? What? What was the reason for keeping the bunnies? Were they just pets? <laughs> or for the garden? Or were they something else? Um, we, the question is about our rabbits. And we do have... Princess Bride's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we keep the rabbits for, they kind of accelerate the composting process, they keep the grass mode, and then we do harvest them for meat. So, Firefly, you guys, Randy actually got to meet Adam Baldwin and get a cover of Firefly signed. You want to see Adam Baldwin's signature? It's in shiny marker. It says, stay shiny. <laughs> to Randy, stay shiny. The man uh -huh. they call Jane. <laughs> I know, right? Okay. Sorry. It's for everybody watching this after the fact who doesn't get to see the screen scrolling and stuff. There's people commenting and that's what I'm replying to. <laughs> so I'm not just like babbling at myself. Has anybody here watched Venture Brothers? That stuff's amazing. What you getting? The Princess Bride. Oh, this is another really good one. Dracula. Do, do, do. And the Princess Bride. They don't really have a lot to do with each other, but they're very good movies. They're both fantasy, so they go in the fantasy section. Oh, they're in the fantasy <laughs> section of your stuff. We actually need to watch The Legend of Korra. Yeah, we have. So I have to take a minute to tell you guys. I do talk to myself, that's true. But about our Patreon giveaway, Aubrey is the winner this very nice piece congratulations Aubrey you're awesome um and then that one over yonder that you can see on the um the easel sorry um yeah it's probably my favorite Dracula rendition focus fun this is our next giveaway piece and if you guys like these pieces Go to our Patreon because I have the line art kind of digitally like done out to, uh, it's Bram Stoker. Excuse me. Oh, that burnt in my nose. Um, <laughs> uh, Whale Rider? I'll have to check that out. But, uh, we have the line art up on our Patreon where you can just save the image to your computer and then print it off and kind of color it. Tattoo them on your body if you want. <laughs> Some drunken wire work. Give me a couple more inches on this, and I'll... Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you want me to wire wrap? Someone asked, what's your most exotic vacation? <laughs> um, does Kentucky count as exotic? What happened in Kentucky? Billy mm -hmm. Tackett. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, you know, and people say that, Laura, but it's, I never considered myself an artist, and then I was talking to our friend Mitch Faust, who's a very accomplished artist, y'all should check him out, he's very good, awesome person, um, currently having a Kickstarter campaign for his newest art book, but, um, and I was like, man, I wish I could draw, and he's like, man, you know, it must be rough not being, not being able, able to write, and I'm like, what? And he's like, 
we'll think back. <laughs> Kentucky is pretty crazy. <laughs> it's a Mari film. What's this? A little. I'm drinking a little. Randy's drinking a little, he says. Um, <laughs> uh, I need to focus. Yeah, Mitch was like, it must be terrible not knowing how to write. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, writing is drawing words. You know, think back to like, you know, first and second grade when you were very carefully, you had the lined paper and you were so meticulously drawing out every single letter and you just all of your focus and all of your intent. And now you do it without even thinking. Well, it's the same thing with drawing. We don't just like pop out. It's like so many of these artists just practice and practice, and practice. And you don't see that. You just see them with their, you know, finished pieces. Now, I'm not even really all that good. Like, it's just a matter of if you enjoy it and you keep practicing, you're going to get better. So, then like YouTube tutorials. So, cheers. <laughs> Man, I'm getting all sleepy now. <laughs> Next question. That's it. Uh, if you could show me just any drunken wire work, that's cool. Off the cuff sculpture. I don't know. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I've got some wire right here. It is 18 gauge para wire in hematite. At the risk of breaking up the party, the question is, is it possible to hammer para wire without messing up the coating? It is actually. That's what I like so much about para wires. You really have to hammer the crap out of it before you can get it to crack, if even then. And if you're like, and I've only ever had that happen on like some of the silvers. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna cut it with wire snips. Oop, right there <clears throat> and I've lost all of my pliers I don't know where anything is in this house <laughs> I remember crying because of my teacher what because they yelled at you shortly after she had a nervous breakdown guess kindergarten was not for her that's hilarious <laughs> I'm sorry that's not like you are saying that kindergarten wasn't for her is what's hilarious, not what she put you through. Um, <laughs> but no, Randy actually took, like, what, four years of art in high school and then all through middle school and stuff, and they completely had the love of art driven out of him by this bitch-ass teacher. I'd shake her, given the opportunity. Okay, and, ouch, wire snip. Er, these... Do you want wire snips? No, I use the wire snips, but I'm going to make some spirals because I like spir- ouch. I Do like spirals. wire snips? No, those are silly. Room. Oh yeah, I went to Catholic school for one year and they recommended I don't continue with it. Oh, wow. <laughs> so there we've got a little bit of a spiral going. Use my giant forehead as a canvas. Ooh. Did someone say that to you? What? The giant forehead thing. No, that's me saying that. Oh. Aww. <laughs> and then I'm just going to make little spirally loops around it. <clears throat> Y'all, uh, something else. Uh-huh. And I'll hammer it, Jim. Uh, I'm learning how to play the violin. <laughs> and, yeah, you, yeah. I don't know, Randy's making faces at me. <laughs> hey, Diana. I'm so sorry if this is your first time catching me live. Randy and I have been drinking. So, please don't judge all of my live feeds off of this one. I'm a bit tipsy. I'm making... Uh... Wire jewelry. <laughs> oh, we need to make those steaks tonight before they go bad. Randy and I are going to have steak for dinner. It's 10 o'clock. <laughs> Earmuff time, Randy. No, oh my gosh. Yeah, it sounds like I'm torturing the violin. Like, not even kidding. Like, if y'all have seen, like, any of the gifts with sound or anything like that where it's, like, it is the person on the recorder going, like, <laughs> like, I need to play that song at my current skill level because it sounds exactly like that. So... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm just making, I don't know, it's a little sun pendant. It's 10 there too, Tammy, that's pretty cool. P 
yes, a little sunshine. Doot. Do you see? Na, 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 na. Where's my hammer? Is it over here? No. Mm. There it is. More towards the island side of the I don't know. The question is, am I leaning more towards a violin sound or a fiddle? And quite frankly, I'd like to be able to do both because I love Celtic music and like those reels and the beat and everything. And that really ties in a lot to American bluegrass because that's what the fiddling and, and everything kind of evolved into um, whenever the Irish immigrants came over here. So I'm going to take this and this is my little hammer and this is my little wire piece and I'm going to... I'm gonna ham I'm gonna beat the hell out of it <laughs> on this granite block. And I usually always hammer with the yeah, oh my gosh, if I had a cello, that'd be fantastic. Cause I love those like deeper tones. But um I always hammer Oh, that hurt. Stupid funny bone. Um, I, <laughs> I always use the nylon end first and then the metal end because the nylon will kind of get it where it's going. Hey, Francesca. <sighs> Paula, you knew the thing. <laughs> okay, and so now I'm going to do the... This is what it looks like after... You did? That's cool. Cedarville, Arkansas. I'm not certain. We're near Joplin, Missouri, but you can kind of see that's how it looks after it. Um, <laughs> no, the bedroom's on the second story. We used to sleep in the attic, you guys. So that's been, hey kitty, um, that's it all hammered out. What's wrong with my bangs? I don't know. There is there something wrong with them? I like them. They're pretty good. They're on my head. Like, that's a start. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. You gotta play the video of the two cellos playing Thundershot. Oh, the piano guys. Do y'all listen to them? But yeah, I'm gonna hit it with the hammer again on the hard side. And this one's really great for getting, like, some texture going. But careful to not hammer too much, um, because it, it'll, like, make the wire break through itself where it overlaps. I've never tried to teach tipsy before. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, like, y'all didn't sign up for this. I apologize. Just, I hope y'all are having fun. I'm having a blast. It's me and the little mini Majolnir. Okay, so that's what it looks like after hammering it out. And this is just real simple. Thanks, Alyssa. I'm really glad you like our videos. <laughs> hey, Tammy. <laughs> Somebody's posting a whole lot of long stuff. And I don't mind people being, like, not speaking in English, but it's, um, we don't have Google Translate right now, and last time we had somebody posting, like, profanities in, like, Portuguese, so please be nice. But yeah, so then I just took this part and I threaded it through that loop right there, that way it'll stay together. And I don't like how far these two are apart from each other, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my pliers. And I'm going to put them in the holes. And I'm going to kind of... <laughs> You're very kind, Danielle. Tipsy Vaughn is a sleepy Vaughn who still has like chores and stuff to do tonight. Probably. Maybe. <laughs> Ugh, I can't get it in the holes. So there we go. And so you can just kind of go through and reposition it. And it's just a little like flowery sun. Have you ever made flat bales for pendants from hammered wire? I don't think that I have, but that's a really interesting idea. Okay, and so now I'm going to go through with this kneading. Nope, that's too big. That's too big. With this knitting needle, 
Lon asks, have you ever tried making riveted chainmail? I personally have not. I got to use, like, for a whole piece. I've gotten to do a couple, like, rings at a demonstration at, like, a Ren fair because somebody had the hardware for it. But I've never, like, done a whole project on my own. So I'm just wrapping this around this knitting needle. There's my pliers. And then, do you ever shave the leather so it fits too bad? That, <laughs> oh no, Michelle, that's hilarious, but don't be hard on yourself. You got to be patient with yourself. Michelle says even tipsy, she's better at wire wrapping than me. It's, I've been doing this for nine years. I could probably do it in my sleep. You know, I know, Laura, um, we have some steaks in the fridge that we got for like a dollar a pound, um, at the grocery store, but they were like manager special. So they're probably bad already, but um, I'll just put more garlic on them and we'll be fine. Randy and I are blessed with cast iron stomachs. One drink did this. Uh, yeah, Kelly, I'm a cheap date. It takes half of a hard lemonade, but not going to lie, this cup right here, I did have um, a bit of rum chata. Ooh, bamboo knitting needles would be so good. Um, ugh, iced coffee water. <sighs> no, Randy's on troll duty, and then this one, like, I drank, like, the neck out of it, and then put in triple sec that we actually made for on the road, and this is gonna make me sound like such an alcoholic, like, such a lush, but for on the road, I mixed what was left in the triple sec bottle with some vodka and some mango rum, <laughs> just, like, the bottoms of, like, three bottles to bring with us, because I didn't want to bring three mostly empty bottles so in the cooler. That wasn't just triple sec. What? <laughs> He's judging me, you guys. I've been rapping for 20 years, but only because I have to. You have to? That sounds cool. Yeah, Kelly, we all appreciate Randy's troll duty. I don't understand trolls. Like, I guess we all have our hobbies. And I'm not going to be judgy on theirs, I suppose. You really need to do something in that stomach. Randy, quick crackers. <laughs> Jung Woo Yun asks, how old are you? And I'm currently 28 years old. I'll be 29 in August. And y'all, Randy has his birthday soon. When, when do I have my birthday? June 4th. Oh my god, she knows. In three days, and I have not bought him a present. Oh no. <laughs> night, night, crafty mom. We'll see you around. Oh uh, yeah, I guess I'm an old soul. Maybe. <laughs> I have not been to the Oregon County Fair. Ah, uh, that's fine. You know, Randy and I hang out with, like, our best friends are coming up on 50. Like, we just, age is just a number, y'all. <laughs> well, thank you, Ernest. Um, also, somebody, one of my patrons, is gonna get this in with their stuff. Who's it gonna be? <laughs> we don't know. Um, good luck to the, oh, I didn't finish it. I guess I should finish it first. I love you guys so much. You guys are so awesome. God, I've reached that point of tipsiness. I'm professing my undying love to all of you. <laughs> well, Tammy, I'm turning 30 and I don't ever get carded. <laughs> Randy says he's turning 30 and he never gets carded. <laughs> but no, like, seriously, you guys. <laughs> Go Gemini's. So there's, you can see here, <laughs> um, there's a little, this little piece right yonder. I need to curl that in. I saw that, Laura. Thank you so much. Oh, Sinister and I are both tipsy. Mm, I need a shower and a nap for like, like a nine hour nap. Right on. They're 58 and never get carded. Top of that. You ready for some more questions? I am ready for some more questions. Let's go. Uh oh. Speaking of rabbits, how is Zeus the Flemish Giant doing? Zeus the Flemish Giant actually got traded for Thor. 
the also Flemish giant, but who was a different coat color. So, Randy, what do you want for your birthday? Actually, I don't know nothing. <laughs> the, Give me tires for the van. <laughs> Randy wants tires for the van, is what he says. <laughs> I wanted to get him some new shoes because, um, ah, congratulations, Michelle, on your baby's getting married. Um, and it's all done, so somebody's gonna get it. Uh, mine's on the sixth in August. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Um, what was the question? Mm -hmm. I was going to get Randy some new shoes. He really needs a new computer for and a capture card <coughs> for his video games. Um, but that's quite expensive, so we're saving up for it. I don't think we'll be able to get it for him in three days. Um, I, I'd like to get him a couple of video games. It's just, there's just, you know, it's, it, Randy's so difficult to shop for because he's so practical. And like... I don't know, like, <laughs> yeah, Amazon Prime, two days, it's, um, it's just a matter of, like, and with the computer, too, like, he's way more knowledgeable than I am, like, my level of understanding computers is, like, if it has a virus, I'm, like, light and sage, being, like, breathe in the good energy, Intel, and it's, like, no, that's not, I know that's not how computers work. I just don't know how exactly they do work. Whereas Randy's like, he knows what video card he wants. He knows, <laughs> yeah, gift card. No, he'd just be like, you make, made my money into plastic money. Um, <laughs> and so it's just, yeah. Well, even then, he doesn't even buy himself the small stuff. Like, his most recent game system is a GameCube, you guys. Yeah, like, like well, our roommate uh, gifted Randy his Xbox 360. Well, I don't know what kind of keyboard he wants. Like, I know that if I were getting a keyboard, I'd get the one that has, like, the rainbow light up in the background. But Randy and I have very different priorities whenever it comes to keyboards. <laughs> um, so, it, no, we don't, we don't smoke pot, you guys. Um, have you tried to ever make a thin black leather dragon kit? Wait, I'm not sure what you mean by kit, but... Um, what kind of games are you into, Randy? He really likes a South Park game, The Stick of Destiny, and, um... I am looking forward to their new... He's looking forward to the release of The Fractured Butthole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, you guys gotta... <laughs> well, yeah, Shaggy, come on. <laughs> he gets that all the time, though, like... <laughs> Wait, what? What? <laughs> oh, no, my battery power is low! Come back, phone. Don't be tired. We've got three more questions. What? Next question. I think hey, you should Sarah. do a tutorial on making a unicorn crown headpiece. I agree. The question is, um, I think you should make a tutorial on making a Five Guys gift card. Yeah. So good. He loves a good cheeseburger. So, sorry, not to be like, get him gift, like, get him stuff, because it's like, I haven't even gotten him a present yet. But, <laughs> I know, right? Bad battery. Oh my gosh, it's a million degrees. Oh, I'm dying. Um, yep, I'm dead. It's official. Who's your favorite superhero? I'm dead, Jim. Oh, my favorite superhero. Kung Fu Panda? <laughs> Wait, Kung Fu Panda or Master of Kung Fu? No, Kung Fu Panda. Oh, okay. We have a good friend who's a huge fan of um, the Master of Kung Fu comic books. And he got so... Like, he turned purple when I was like, you're Kung Fu Panda comics. And he was just like... <laughs> but now we call him the Kung Fu Panda comics. So... Okay, what's your favorite song that you're always humming? The question is, what's my favorite song that I'm always humming? Ooh, how does it go? <laughs> I don't know, there's like four it's, songs. Wh there's the song from... <sighs> it's really warm. We're going to have to sleep with the air conditioner on tonight. Mm -hmm. That rad monody lyrics. Um, there's the...
from Robin Hood. Um, and then uh, there's, it's a song called Fat Rat by Mama D. And it's just, it's so good, you guys. I think you actually saw one of the mosquitoes fly by. Also, as the hamster dance. Is that really what it's called? Because I've been looking for the sheet music for that for like a million years, you guys.